but like it's it's that it's that mental switch man and it's mm. it's key <laughs> when I was younger, um, like I didn't grow up like knowing yeah. if I could even start, I didn't know what like owning a business was. Right. And so in 2010, 11, I actually got married at 22. So like super young, I'm 34. Damn. And, uh, yeah, my ex and I, we moved down there and we started two businesses on a credit card. So yeah. it was, it was crazy. Sorry. Yeah. It, it was nuts. It was like a lot of really hard times for like three years. Three years, like every single month was like just making it to the next month. No. There was like a time actually where our businesses started to do pretty well, but we had an issue with our billing and we just expanded. So the other business was a music school and um, I had a shipping company at the time. And so we expanded and uh, all of our payments through Square got locked into an account so we couldn't access them. Oh, and at that time I was like getting into videography and uh, I bought a lens from Henry's. Like, do you know Henry's? Yeah. 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 So I bought a lens at Henry's uh, for 600 bucks, like two weeks prior. And we, at the time, like we were like, the, the studio build was pretty big. Like it was like 4,000 square foot, um, similar yeah. space to this, but like a music school. And uh, we couldn't, we had literally zero money. There, we have, I have a photo. I saved it in my phone. It's from like six years ago. And uh, we had a smarty jar with like a bunch of change and like random shit. We would throw in like coins and dollars and whatever. We emptied that that week to like get fuel. And then we were so fucked because all of our credit cards were maxed. Like we fit up this beautiful building and whatever. We had zero money, like zero money left. And uh, I had to return a lens so that we could get to London to see my family. Because at the time, Lisa was doing like a, a bikini, like a fitness competition. We had no gas money, dude. So I literally had to take that $600 lens that I bought and run it back to Henry's and drop it off just to, just to literally get through that week. It was fucked. That's how you knew you were going to be a videographer in the future. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, fuck, maybe this video thing isn't for me. <laughs> Should stick to something else. But uh, there's times like that that I think like really like build your character. Cause 100%, man. 100%. Now I feel like everybody goes through that stuff. Like anybody that is like first generation of like starting something, everybody goes through that. So, um, but yeah, so we, we haven't been doing like a formal intro to these basically like Dylan cuts them and we just kind of roll with them. Yeah. But, uh, I know like a little bit about, about your background just from what I've seen on social, but like, um, obviously you're a wicked videographer, like one of the best right. ones that I've seen in the area by far, like in the GTA. Um, maybe tell us like a little bit how you got into videography and like okay. what, what was that like move into that and what your plans are we'll kind of go from there. Okay. So. Sweet. Can't remember the exact age, but I'm just gonna say 11, because I I remember I pulled up a video and I was 12 years old when I uploaded that one. But yeah. I started. Um, I don't know if you've seen like puck tricks, like with the hockey stick and puck. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I yeah. used to, I used to do those back in I think it was grade like six, grade okay. five ish, like pretty young. Yeah. Um, then my brothers got into it with me. Okay. And I would just record myself and upload it to like social media, and I built like I I learned that's how I learned how to like utilize social media at a very young age. Yeah. because people were engaging with my content back when the algorithm was like amazing yeah like um I oh it's not amazing like, anymore yeah not very good not very, you have dude to it changes like every other it. week like shit's yeah. always changing yeah. like my my uh partner just had a video hit 130k and then it just stopped really yeah like it just went like from like a wall 130k and then just like out of nowhere just they like shut what was off. the niche like what was the content uh on? bodybuilding body oh yeah, interesting Oh no way! Oh sick! Yeah, oh that's we awesome. Some pretty big guys. We we just shot a like a IFBB pro. Yeah. I, I don't I don't know too much about. IFBB is like the top pro. Yeah, <laughs> he's going he's going for Mr. Olympia. We just shot him. We made a sick video. I don't know if you saw that one. I did. I think I saw that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that one uh, is, is pretty cool. Sweet. Um, but back back to the story. Yeah. Um. So I was 11 years old, recording myself, and I started my my buddy Basar from Dune Public School. I was in grade seven at the time. He came out over to my house and like he had been showing me like these videos that he was making. I was like, dude, what are you using? Because I use an app, like a little app called Video Star. Okay. I don't know if you know what that is. <laughs> no. Nah. Like super ghetto editing app. Okay. Like, it was like the best. Like it was, I don't I don't know why they didn't put any money mm. into it, but it How it many did years well. ago was this? Was this like recent? Um now I'm 19. Eight years ago, seven years ago. Crazy. So I yeah. hadn't even got into video yet. 
Really? Yeah, yeah. Really? I've only been doing like video. I bought like my first proper camera, I guess, about like five and a half years ago, maybe six oh, years ago. Yeah. yeah. Come yeah. up. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> See how fast you can do things? Put your mind to Seriously, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, so but, you're editing on this app. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm editing on Video Star, and he comes over and he shows me After Effects. Mm. Everyone knows After Effects. Of course. Um, and I'm like, dude, this is sick. Like, Because the effects on the app were good, mm. but then this, I was it's like, like next you level, bro. Keyframe, you can do all this. <laughs> yeah. What are these graphs? I was, I was confused, but he taught me, um, and I started doing sports edits. Uh, back in the day, there's a guy I used to follow named Sensational big like sports okay. editor so yeah we would just he taught me how to pull clips from online okay. then i'd make like these little edits of them yeah um and i actually got really freaking good but i was editing mm. on like this like crappy crappy laptop <laughs> really like, like just shit like, like i'd upload a clip it would take like five minutes really yeah like really bad it was like a little touchscreen <laughs> hp it was not it was not good it probably was less powerful than like the most powerful ipad at the that's time. hilarious so it wasn't it wasn't like good at all it yeah me, like your phone was probably yeah. better like a, like a 20 second video yeah. would take me like three, four days. Really? And that's not because I was slow at editing. That's <laughs> because you're it, rendering and waiting for yeah, shit to Yeah, the happen. rendering, I'd have to leave it on like two nights in a row. It'd be like, so I remember actually at one point, so I like got my first camera six years ago. But before that, when my brother and I were younger, we used to make these like sponsor me videos for like wakeboarding. Yeah. And we used to shoot on a, fuck, I forget what it was called. It was a Sony, like the eight mil cassette tapes. Okay. And I used to have a Toshiba uh, like, uh, like desk or a uh, laptop. And I used to, you'd have to like, I think they did like a firewire fire wire or something, like whatever the cable was. And you'd have to take the analog tape and then you'd convert it, but you'd have to leave it overnight, bro. To get oh, yeah. like an hour's worth of footage was like 12 hour process. Oh, so it's probably similar to like your oh, yeah. rendering. Like, yeah. yeah. We've, we've both been through <laughs> yeah. it, man. Every, every, it's I a different every world Every creator's now, man. been through the, the rendering uh, process. Mm-hmm. It's, it's tough now. And my partner does CGI. So like okay. he, uh, I have to lend him my card. Oh, no so way. So he can actually like render it card? faster. Yeah, yeah. Because I have a pretty good card. And yeah. this card is this card's good, but like, I think, you know Octane scores? Yeah. yeah my yeah. Octane score is like almost a thousand. And then his is like a yeah. hundred something. So it's like, the <laughs> difference is like something. almost like, it's like <laughs> almost tenfold. Is this a guy that did uh, graphics or anything for that recent Lambo video did down in the States? Or the rental agency? Was there yes, a, yes, yeah. yeah. So I had that video, in, like, visioned in my mind for, like, it must have been, like, two. You know when you have, like, a vision for yeah. a video and you're, like, I don't care if it's for a company or for anything. I you want just want to, to make this it. happen. Yeah. Yeah, so I um, got in the door with MPH, probably the biggest rental company in, like, mm. Miami. Yeah. Um, if not, like, Florida. Sick. It's huge. Um, and I just got in the front door with their marketing manager, built a really good relationship with him. I told him, I said, hey, man. I want to create a video with you, with my team and I, yeah, just to show you what we can do and to show the world what we can do. Because I, like, down here, I never really had the opportunities to film, you know, big rental companies. Sure, there's not yeah. many. From no, Waterloo, there's not many, bro. Um, yeah. But I was filming like people's personal cars, but no one, mm-hmm. no one has, you know, like two thousand dollars. They're not gonna to, drop money on that. Yeah, to yeah. make a video of their Lambo. Maybe sure. like, some super super rich guy is just like, yeah, just make it. But yeah, um, this is in the winter. Um, and I went down there and I was, I told them the whole storyboard uh, and they're like, dude, we love this. Let's make it happen. I was like, yes, yes. Oh yeah. Finally like coming to like coming to play. Cause you know, Penzo oil commercials. Yeah. So I was, I was watching those and I told like my family, my friends, I'm like, guys, mark my words. I will be able to make videos like this like very soon. I fucking um, love that dude. And then it just like recording 4 a.m rollers hanging out the trunk hanging out the the bro when you posted it uh actually i showed all the guys here i was like guys like watch this video this is dope as shit and the way that like you cut and there's like the intro like the all the sfx and sound design was dope as hell but then you cut to the drive-through sequence and it drops out and it's like that shit's so cool because literally it feels like film it's like all the shit like the hook stuff like gets you up front but like the way that you set videos up is really dope like it, there's like a hook and it's not obviously like we do branded content for, you know, companies. So yeah. our hook is usually always like a line or like a, a statement. Yep. Your hooks are super sick because they're like super attention grabbing visuals yep. um, that are really dope. So how do you like a, a approach a video? Like what's your process? Dude, it's all a vision in my mind. Like I, I, mm. feel, I feel like very uh, connected to life in a sense. Mm. Um, I do a lot of meditation. I just, I just like, I feel that, like that presence of, 
don't know what you believe in God, the universe, yeah. whatever it may be. I can feel it. Yep. Um, and I just, I swear, I just tap into it. I vision it. Um, and my partner and I, we go back and forth. He's fucking talented, man. Like, yeah. He's super fucking talented. Um, and we come up with like this just awesome idea. And then we're like, okay, this is how the, the hooks, we don't really talk about the mm. hooks. We're just like, okay, this is how it's going to go. This is how we're going to kind of reel people in with that Lambo video. Yeah. It starts off in like a garage. And it was like, what is this? This guy's like working neon lights. I actually pulled yeah. that clip from online. We didn't even take that. Oh, no way. Because it matched, it matched the exact lighting in the next clip. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, it kind of has to. Yeah. Um, so I pulled it in and then just. <clears throat> And That's sick. Starts, yeah, yeah. Man. So we, we just kind of craft it up, and it happens. You know, it's very natural to us because it's we we don't do videography and stuff to make money. Mm. The money comes when you're just invested in doing something that you love. For sure. Um, I'm a, I'm a big believer in that. Um, I do understand like you got to do, do some things that you do not like to obviously put like food on the table. Sure. But like, I just we just love what we do so much. It just it just happens. It's hard to explain. Yeah. Well, I think it's cool. Like when you said like the like spiritual, like kind of meditation side of that, I feel like those guys that understand whatever that thing, whatever you want to believe in, but there's like some kind of like outside super, like not supernatural in a weird way, but like people that can tap into the like, I guess, yeah, like supernatural or like outside of like otherworldly stuff. I feel like their ability to storytell is like 10 million times better than somebody who's unable to access that part of their you know, whether it's like faith element or whatever that is, they tend to be better storytellers or better visionaries. Yep. Um, and I think it is like a state that you put yourself in. It is. Um, it they is. get over time. So, so sick. So that's, that's how you, like you guys just rock up with an idea already. Do you ever just get on, on site and just go like, whatever happens, happens? Um, we used to, um, mm. and then we're like, you know what? Like we had, we had, I think, I think all, for me, all it takes is one bad time and I'm like, mm. this is not happening again. Yeah. Cause we, we make mistakes so we can learn from them not to make them again um and where are we going with this <laughs> oh no I, I was just uh basically going from like the the process of like how you how you get to like oh, yeah, basically yeah, a video yeah. like um, how do you get to that end result of like something that like looks at the quality of what you guys do dude like i said it just yeah it, it happens we tell the company um because we do a lot of work like we do some video like that mph video i paid fully out of pocket paid a sound mm. designer paid the editor paid to go to miami yeah, I paid for the hotel gas because I want I want to make this shit happen. Like yeah. I just, I'm taking big risks. Like I'm literally like I, I heard Grant Cardone. You you know who Grant of course. Cardone is? Uh, yeah, um, absolutely. He said you have to be willing to literally go fucking broke mm -hmm. for your business in order to make it work. I heard that a couple months ago, and ever since then, like everything goes towards my business. Always has been, but but that made it like more insane. Like there have been times where I've been like literally like worried, where I'm like, am I going to go broke? Yeah. But then I'm like, nah, man. I, I believe in this vision and yeah. I know that it's going to happen. It, not exactly how I want it to, because nothing can be as planned sure. as you want. Like we all plan our futures, but it never happens exactly for sure how we believe it's going to be. But I'm like, it's going to, at least it sets a roadmap yeah. of where you want to go. You have to, you yeah. have to be willing to, put everything in 100% you, you know that you could probably talk about it for like fucking <laughs> yeah six for sure hours, man, well right? it's true and, and anybody that sits across this table or any conversation I've ever had in in 12 years of running a business I, yep. yeah it's been 12 years 22 till now 23 till now um every single person has the same story like they went all in yep. um if if it's something that is truly like you know making a dent um, there's, there's side hustles and stuff, which is really cool, but anybody that's really created opportunity, not just for themselves, but other people has done that. They've gone all in. Um, and that's where I think too, like as you grow and as you expand, there's a difference between having something that creates opportunity for you and your family and people that are close to you. Um, and there's a whole other skill set that then you have to learn to adapt and grow and build when you start to expand and create other opportunity because then you know you got other people responsible for and people are depending yeah. on you to like you know be a good leader and and you know get to the destination that you're saying you're going to um so that's super interesting as well um but uh what do you guys shoot on you want to you want to know yeah i want to know a73 that's amazing camera bro not for what we're doing though like it's insane because like the quality looks like it's shot on your like night Sony. shots look sick though but sony does so well with night it, it, it does, like um, Okay. Do you, do you, do you know what Topaz I know, is? Maybe. What is it? This is secret. This can't be posted. Okay, I won't okay, post I, it. <laughs> we'll just we'll just but beat this whole bit um, out. So it's a AI video like enhancer. So I I could take a clip. 
I swear to God, from like, I don't know when cameras got decently good. Yeah. I'm just going to say like 1990, 2000, somewhere in okay. that era. Um, you could take a piece of shit looking clip, put it in this, and it would make it look like 10 times better. So like just a clarity, like clarity, saturation, like everything? Everything. Like the, if you have a very noisy video, this will clear up like 90%. What is it? A subscription or it's like yeah, a I fucking... like 600 bucks for like... One th- lifetime? lifetime? And dude. It's called Topaz? Topaz Video oh, AI. Or beeping it every time. Dude, <laughs> Topaz Video AI. I swear to Bro, God, that's sick insane. as fuck. I wish I had some before and afters. Maybe I do. How long? Um, what do you run it in? Premiere? Or like, do you uh, run it in After Effects? Like, no, it's, 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 it's its own standalone. It's its own program. You just drag, drop the video. Um, and then you choose, you know, your enhancement settings. Uh, I normally go auto and then I adjust a few things. Fuck. Um, do you take your final flows or you take like individual clips that are just noisy or shit and then you put them in there final, and then dump them out? Mostly final. You just um, take the final and slap it in there and go boom, done. I swear. Does it color grade and stuff too? Like well, does we, it? No, we do all the color grading. And okay. It takes the video as it is, yep. but it just, it doesn't manipulate how it looks but it manipulates the quality of it. So I could put a 1080 oh, video crazy. in, it'll upscale it to 8K. I could put it in. What? Dude, that's like taking like 8 bit to like, because Sony, here's my problem with Sony. This is why we stopped shooting Sony and we shoot Canon all the time, is because the Sony codec, when you start to, it's super small file sizes, which is awesome because you get a baby SD. But when you start to actually manipulate it a lot, I find it, unless your lighting is perfectly fucking dialed and your exposure is perfect every time, it falls apart really fast. Whereas with the Canon stuff, the codec's massive. Like our file sizes are like ridiculously big. But I feel like it stacks up a little bit better when you start to break it down. Yeah. Um, dude, that's sick as fuck. It I've never, yeah, I, I didn't know what Topaz is. <laughs> you should try it, man. Like, it's mind blowing. And they even have like a photo AI. Really? Like, I do like some photos for some people because I have like the hybrid camera. Yeah, um, yeah. And like, there were, there were a couple photos I was shooting. Um, and I was shooting on a really crappy lens. So yeah. I had to bump up the ISO because it was a 3.5 aperture. And okay. There's like, no light in it. It was a dark, like, house. Yeah. Um, Photos came out after I put them in Lightroom, super grainy. Okay. Put them in this AI. Just crispy as fuck. Look, yes, it looked like <laughs> I nailed everything, and I was like, like I, I can drag the shadows completely up on everything, the curves, the slider, Dude, all the way what up. The hell? Grainy, gone. No way. Photo AI is even better because it's not a video, right? For sure, you just work in one frame. Yeah. Stupid. Dude, that's amazing. Okay, I gotta check that shit out. Dude, okay, you that's should. sick. All right, so Sony A7s, and then uh, you're running those, yeah, running we're, Topaz. We're getting an FX3. Oh, sick. Yeah, nice. Uh, oh, that's next, awesome. Next week it should be. Cool. So and what, why? What's, what's the re- what do you think, what's that going to um, make life easier or different? Well, it's not, I always say it's not the camera, because a lot of people, when they get into, like, content creation, like a, a Joe Schmo could go buy, you know, an FX9. Yeah. And he could go shoot a video and edit it. It looked like fucking trash. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> film it on a camcorder from 1980. Yeah. And... I could most likely make something better. For sure. So it's it's the people behind it, but mm-hmm. if I can get that quality in, then it just makes it... And you know, stack that, it with the experience. Yeah, that yeah. much better. Because right now, like, most of our projects, the last, like, four or five, have been, like, $2,000. Okay. Per, per shoot. Like, yep. Per one, like, 30-second video, 45-second video. Which is, yep. I'm very proud for being at my age, being able to... Yeah, dude, that that's amazing. You said you're 19? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. fucking dope, dude. And... Uh, thank you thank you yeah and um i want to be able to scale up to you know a 5k video and yeah. then a 10k video and i can't go to a client with an a7 III and be like yeah i'm gonna shoot this video for ten thousand dollars for you dude it's, it's smart that, that you say that man because literally we will have shoots where we build out a rig yeah. that looks bigger just for visibility yeah, because if we yeah because <laughs> if we show up like even though like a 1dx mark ii will shoot everything that we need perfectly fucking exact you could handhold that shit for a lot of the clips that we need for that shoot but because they're but yeah it's like a 5k 10k shoot you're showing up with a fucking rig a c200 or you have all this gear that you don't even fucking touch but it's there and they see it and it's like okay i'm getting my value because yeah, there's a lot of people that literally are used to, especially with production companies, the old ways of doing things. Typically, the guys too that have good budgets to spend on the dollar side, they have worked with you know production companies from the '90s because or the early 2000s because they're usually you know in their 50s and up um, as business owner. Yeah. Um, so when they, when you show up and they go. You know, oh, back when we used to shoot, the guy had a fucking shoulder cam and like a whole rig and like massively, you know, a six person crew. Um, obviously, we know we don't need that anymore, but yeah, a lot of the time it's just fucking visibility, bro. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's all about perception. Man. Yeah. I've realized that a lot over, uh, you know, the years that's the past couple of years that happened. Um, hmm. 
I just learned that everything is perception, man. Like, if, you know, the news or media is going to put something up on a screen and people believe it. And oh, yeah, bro. It's not real. You know, like <laughs> perception at this point through a phone is reality. Um, so if you understand that, you're probably going to be fine. But a lot of people don't understand that, man. Right? Yeah. Like, don't understand that. Yeah. <laughs> so you, before uh, we started running, you were talking about, like, uh, with just digital and, like, how, like, consumed people are, like, online and like especially like on social apps um and you have your own podcast that kind of addresses and talks about stuff like that um what was like kind of the purpose behind starting that podcast and like what are your views on social like positive negative is it how you approach Um, it like what are your thoughts i mean everything that like you perceive something a certain way that's how you're gonna see it right if you see the world as you know let's say there's a a really negative guy let's say his name's joel Mm -hmm. and then we got Callum over here. Callum's a really happy, positive guy. He sees everything in the most positive way. And then Joel is really negative. If Joel looks at the world saying, oh, this place is a shithole. There's all this bad stuff going on, yada, yada, yada. If he's going to keep complaining, I'm just going to shut him up. But, and then there's Callum and he's saying all this positive stuff and looking at it in the most positive way, you know, like he's going to see the world in a completely different light than Joel. Yeah. Because 100%. just their mindset. And that's like mindset is everything in life. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's another reason I started the podcast is, you know, like I almost like looked at it as, okay, if this is me and I can take, you know, a view of the world or an opinion, I can put a lens over my eyes and it changes, Mm -hmm. then, you know, that changes everything for you. So that's why I call it a positive lens. It's just, you take that positivity that you learned from the podcast, put Mm -hmm. it over your eyes and look at the world through that new light. Um, because like everyone thinks the way they think because of the way they were raised up, for sure if, if that makes yeah sense. it's learned behavior traits yeah yeah so right. everything is learned typically from you know it's how you solidify and what you reinforce in your brain yeah man that dictates your reality yeah it's it's like the concept of like you know you have a one guy that you know his parents died when he was really young and he fucking goes out becomes a drug addict ruins his life and takes down 50 people with him and yep. you got the other guy that his parents died when he was really young goes out uses it as a force for good and builds that as a foundation to build a fucking amazing company and support yes. a million people and yep. and changes the world yep. so it really is like two perspectives same situation how you approach it it's all in the mind yeah. Every, everything's in the mind um, and yeah that's pretty much all I gotta say on that <laughs> nice it's, I love it life is what you created man hell yeah um, so, uh, goals, like what, what's your plan? Like, uh, obviously you love video. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of your future. Like, do you want to always continue to create in that space? Like what's, what's kind of like three year goal, five year goal, immediate goals, three year goal. I would say is I want to have someone like this. Oh. Um, like I, I like to set my goals high. Hell yeah. Um, it's going to take a lot of hard work, but I'm okay doing that. I'd rather work hard and get the things I want than yep sit around and get the things I don't want for um, sure so I would three-year goal would be having someone like this having people to provide an amazing life for like the people that are here yep that are working with you like mm-hmm. they're probably like just from what I can see in the vibe I feel mm. they're loving it they're loving yeah. their life they're loving everything about it that's what I want to do I want to help change people's lives mm-hmm. just from them being kind of like surrounded with me um and that's kind of what I want to do with the world I want to change the world like I have multiple goals mm-hmm. um, obviously the videography and stuff is like I'm paramount yeah, one yeah, yeah yeah and then i want to change the world on the side with that and content is king so cool. 100 percent, perfect match um so yeah my three-year goal will be having a very successful business cool um, like this have a podcast studio yeah you know get, get people coming you know having ten thousand dollars shoots 15 to fifty thousand dollars yeah so like the sky's the limit right like I, heck yeah man i want to have a hundred thousand dollars shoots you know like that's that's my yeah three-year goal and i if i set it high enough i'll probably go further than that Hundred um, percent. I heard there, Grant Cardone say something like that. Yeah. He's like, if you set, let's say you set your goal for ten million a year, you might hit seven. Mm-hmm. But let's say you hit it, you set it for fifty. What if you hit twenty five? Hundred percent. Always set your goal side. And I'll, and there's another one that's always like, uh, in three, you'll you're usually underachieve in three years. Um, sorry, you'll underachieve in one year, but yep. you'll overachieve over three years. Yep. So when you look at a single year, you usually come up short. Yep. But then on your three year, you usually overshoot, yep. which is weird how things like compound and stack. Um, Heck, yeah. Man. Yeah. That, that, yeah. Don't 
can be in it. I don't know. <laughs> the compound. Have you read that book? Uh, I'm a terrible reader, to be honest. Okay. I, well, I mean, I can read. I'm not like illiterate. Yeah. <laughs> I just, uh, I'm a YouTube watcher. So yep. anything, I try to learn stuff all the time. I find I'm a, you know, try to be a student of life. Yep. Uh, but reading something this year that I actually set as a goal um, that I'm going to try to do a book a month. But as for reading, I'm, I've always been bad, man. I'm, I was not an academic. I hated school. I dropped out after six months of uni. And uh, yeah, it was not my thing. But what's your top three books? Okay. Number one, I would have to put Limitless by Jim Quick. Okay. That book yep. changed my life. Um, insane. Insane. So yeah. it, like, can I give a backstory? I, on I was wh- just going to fuck why? yeah, 100%. Um, okay. So another reason why I'm kind of doing what I'm doing and not like, I, I'm, I'm just going to put this out there, even though it may not be true. I was going to be a professional athlete in my mind, in yeah. my mind. Yeah. Okay. Because like, everything in what? that, um, hockey. Oh, sick. So I played, oh, yeah, of course. I played double A hockey my entire life. Um, I had some years doing like MD, just jumping up and down, but I, I loved it with all my heart. Like I still do. Like I, every day I wish I could be on the ice. Yeah. Um, and I actually got four severe concussions playing sports. Fuck. And I think my fourth one was when I was 14. Um, and I had to quit like straight up. Like doctor was like, dude, if you keep like, uh, he's like, I'm not going to make you stop. Yeah. But if you want to actually like enjoy life, yeah. you've got to stop, man. Cause one more, you're going to be like. Damn, like, and you're only 14 at that yeah, point, bro. I've been in like a wheelchair or something because like I couldn't think correctly. Mm. Um, and hearing all that stuff, being so young, my brain's not fully developed. I can't, you know, think, you know, too logically mm. yet. Um, and I was just telling myself negative things like my memory is shit. Mm. You know, I uh, I can't remember, you know, a thing that I read three seconds ago. Like it was, mm. it was bad. So I was it was just constant negative self talk. Yeah. Um, and. Then I came across the book Limitless by Jim Quick and it talks about the brain. He, his story resonated with me in like the first page because same exact situation, Hmm. got a really bad head injury and he was being told by everyone, teachers, students, you know, you're dumb, like all this negative stuff. And then he started telling it to himself to the point where he was actually dumb. Damn. So it was the exact same story. And then he goes into the mind and he switched his whole life around. And me seeing that, hmm. I was like, you know what? I'm going to listen to this guy. I'm going to read this, the rest <laughs> of this damn book. It like resonated and, big yeah, time. And I'm, I'm going to put all this action. Hmm. And then literally within like less than like, it felt like three months. Yeah. Boom, totally back, different back, person. Back to normal. Yeah. Like, that's sick. Just because of the things I was telling myself, it just yeah. broke me down. Yeah. But oh man, people don't understand yeah. how much your thoughts create your reality. Right. Yeah, dude. It literally like every single like any any win or any fail that you've ever had in your life started with like a thought. Yep. Right. And especially with the win. Right. It's like, oh, I wanted to create this or like if a car is like a goal that you set. It's like, I want to get a car. OK, well, you get the car. You lit- everything started as that thought. And yep. then that directed you into a path of either accomplishing that or failing in that. Yep. Um, yeah, it's interesting. So. All right. So Limitless. Yes. Yeah, second Limit. book. Dude, I've read so many. I'm going to have to put Think and Grow Rich mm-hmm. by Napoleon Hill. Yeah, of I course. I know a lot of people say that book is good because it is. Um, and that book, I read it in a time in my life where it was like weird. Like I was in high school, mm. um, but it completely changed me. Um, and dude, just what it teaches you, just about really just thinking and then growing. Yeah. You know, that's that's key because your thoughts, like a seed, you plant it, you water it. Yep meditate on it whatever you may do visualization for sure grow um that's that that would be my second my second there's really no backstory to that one i just kind of <laughs> picked it up because i remember um someone i looked up to at the time mm. uh who was it i can't i can't remember who yeah um, they recommended it to me okay I read, it, read it it was like okay yeah amazing. it's like a top five it's like yes. uh yeah yeah it's a it's a non-negotiable it yeah because i got sent in the mail i just received a random copy from i don't know who mm just like the actual original one because over time like they you know, changed a bit yeah yeah that we don't want people <laughs> for right? sure man um, yeah so you gotta censor the censor the sheep man yeah yeah it's, <laughs> it's it's nice and thick so i'm gonna read nice. i'm gonna reread the entire thing um even though i read the shorter one but now i'm mm. gonna get into the bigger one because it's gonna have some good stuff nice dope that's sick yeah. and then number three number three okay there were there i would say put, i would put them at a tie hmm but I'm going to put one above the other. All right. The 1% rule mm. by Tommy Baker. Okay. I assume you see me post this like every day on my Yeah, Instagram. bro. So yeah. Literally 1% 1% better. better. Yep. And then that goes back into, you know, the compound effect and mm-hmm. exponential growth. 
Oh, um, yeah. And that book, I read it probably two months ago, three months ago. I can't quite put okay. a pen on it. Yeah. Um, but it's it was kind of the exact same as the compound effect, just like more worded in my my kind of sense. Gotcha. You know? it, it just taught me about growing literally 1% a day. It's like block out the past, block out the future. Obviously, set your goals. Yep. Because without, you know, you can't hit a target, you can't see. For sure. So I, I have my goals set and then you just broke it down so simply to just like one foot in front of the other. Like mm. just that, that's all it is. Stop thinking about what you got to do tomorrow. Stop thinking about, you know, a year from now mm-hmm. and just dial in on, you know, this moment because this moment's the only real actual thing in our reality. 100%. Um, and that book just, dude, 1% better a day. Game changer. Will change someone's life. <laughs> like, that's awesome. If, if you can apply that every second. It's, it's, it's hard. Like when you get in a stressful situation, sometimes it's hard to remember yeah. those little things. But if you can get 1% better a day, man. Yeah. The, the power. Oh, and in, in literally power. half a year, you're a completely different human being. Yes, man. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's what's so crazy. Like, I think it's interesting because there's a lot of people like I moved back to this town yep. after being away for a long time. Yep. And there's a lot of people here, like not to shit on them, but like their life didn't change at all. Like they were going to the same place. They're doing the same shit eight years later, man. And then there's other people that I know that I'm very close with um, that a year for them is like three years for like a normal person yeah. where like stuff is just changing so much. And like things have like they're stacking and compounding skills and like just growing so fast. They're like you can bend time. you like you can really change the reality of time. Just based on like how you approach those days on a micro basis on the macro when you scale that out is just like so insane. Yeah, man. So you have a rocket booster attached to your back. Literally. It's like you've been given extra time in life. Like it's a, it's like a time advantage, which is super interesting. And like, I don't think a lot of people like really take that seriously. So I mean, you have to, um, cause time, man, number one, it's not real. Mm -hmm. It was man-made. It was invented. Mm -hmm. Um, that's all I gotta say about it. Like <laughs> it's it's something that you have to take advantage of because like I could I could wake up and someone I love could be dead tomorrow or yeah. I couldn't wake up tomorrow. You know, like that. For those sure. are the things that happen every day to people. So it, being grateful and having gratitude for you know right now and everything you have and just enjoying this 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 time before it runs out and you know mm. having that rocket booster on is gonna be better than not because let's say your goal is to get to the moon. And like you said, those people that didn't change in eight years, they wouldn't even exit orbit. hundred percent. You know, like us with the rocket boost, we're on the moon. Yeah. And yeah. we went through, you know, space and time and we were doing the things that we wanted to do because we understood that little hack. A hundred percent. Totally different mindset, dude, different yeah, approach man. to life. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And that's, that's another reason why I do what I do. Mm-hmm. It's because I want people to see it be like, damn, you know, that kid's young yep. and he's doing all this. Yeah. Like yesterday he was doing this. Now he's out here. It's like, He's doing more than I have in the past two <laughs> months. And it's like, that's, I'm not doing it to piss people off. People do mm. get pissed for no reason, but yeah. I want to influence and inspire because this world, I'm going to have an impact on it. I know that. Yeah. Um, and I assume it's a goal of yours too, is to, you know, make the world a better fucking place. Yeah, absolutely. But my, like, it's a goal to like, it, there's definitely a self-serving goal. And I think it's very good to have a self, um, like set goals that are very yep. self-serving because I think you can't help anybody else until you filled your own cup. Yep. You know, there's people that go around that are, you know, broke, poor, unhealthy, and they're talking about all the things that they are trying to help people in those areas. It's ridiculous. Like you have to take an, a selfish approach to life in the sense that if your cup isn't full, you're not filling anybody else's cup up, you know? But at the end of the day, 100%, I want to, uh, my goal is I want to be the biggest media agency in Ontario. Like yeah. in, in Eastern Ontario, for sure, within the next three years, that is our goal. That's I our mandate. Move, yeah, yeah, bro, <laughs> seriously. Well, we're like, we got to move to Toronto if we want that to happen. So for us, we're a small town, right? Yeah, so yeah. to do what we've done here is absolutely crazy. Um, and to extrapolate that out and go, holy fuck, you know, like Toronto is like population 30 times what is Kingston. Yes. To be able to do that in Toronto and then be able to do that in Ottawa and then Vancouver and yep. then fucking go from there. Yep. And it's funny because like you said, it's like, when you're around certain people, you, it's like some people like just it, 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 to change the perspective or to re like structure the framework uh, is super important. And I think you can do that through books. I think you can do that through mentors. I think you can do that through just like getting out and, and your network. Um, but to be able to like reframe your perspective is super valuable to always like continue progressing. Yeah. 
Right. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I think like making a dent in the world is like absolutely a very self-serving and a very selfless goal yeah. um, that I think everybody really should have. Everybody should, should want to make a dent in the world. Who yeah, wants to should. fucking go through life and then just die? Dude, not me, man. <laughs> like, not me. I don't, I don't want you know my funeral to happen and then mm. everyone forgets. Cause I'm not going to lie. That's what happens, man. Yeah. If, like, the average person, mm-hmm. um, they get forgotten like a couple months after their funeral. People may think about them here and there, but yeah, I, I want to leave, but not leave. Mm-hmm. You know, I want, I want people to remember like not even me, not even necessarily me, but the things I did for sure. And you've made an impact in somebody's yeah. life. Like there's, yeah. there's people that have been through my life that, you know, are either past or I just don't have a relationship with any, with anymore, but the lasting impact they've had in my life will always be, it'll always have a, an effect. Like it'll always, it's like cause and effect around that person or whoever yeah. you have that impact on. Yep. Um, and that's why I think cars are so cool yeah. because yeah. the moment you drive one of those fucking cars out, you can, it's like instantly does something for people. Yep. And those moments, they're going to remember more than eight years of fucking English class through school. And like, they're going to remember the one day they came out of the mall and there was a fucking Lambo there and the guy let them sit in the car and rev it up. That's going to do something to people, right? So those little micro dents create ripples across space time. Yes. And I think it's dope as fuck. (laughs) That's cool. You're doing like this kind of the same thing that I do, except I don't have a Lamborghini. (laughs) (laughs) But I still, I want to Bro, you still have one of the nastiest cars ever, bro. Thank you. Thank Mm you. It ain't no no Lambo though, man. Yeah. Hey. Because a, a Lambo is just, it's different. It it's is. Different. It, it definitely is. It's it different. does something to people. And it, honestly, I think yeah, it's yeah. it's even more than like a Ferrari or Porsche. Like, you know, we've got the Porsche and it, it does something, but not to the same effect. Oh. There's something with kids, man. And I feel, I posted something on my story the other day, but it was like society like sucks the life out of people. Like in the, it's literally designed to like take excitement out of you. And it's sad because there's a lot of people that are, you know, even your age or my age, they might look at a Lambo and because it's like they've framed it in their mind that it's outside of what they're able to achieve. So they just write it off and instantly have a negative reaction to it. Happens a lot with guys older in life. Um, But there's something about kids. It doesn't matter if they're boy, girl, three years old, 12 years old. Every single one that sees that car knows it's fucking dope and they get super fucking excited about it. Every single one. I've never had a kid look at that car and just be like, um, um, I want to go to... They're losing their minds. Like, yeah, they're like, man. whoa, mom, look. Lambo, like, they're so stoked. Lambo. They're le- Like, it does yeah, something. Man. And it's like truly like the most raw form of like human emotion excitement is represented in that car. And like, that's what... If people can harness that and like recognize that and be like, hey, how do you live in that moment more? That's super valuable. Because that's like, yes. that's something that allows you to live, again, like live a life that's outside of like that normal, just, I don't know, it does something. It really does inspire or create motivation to expire, or inspire. It does, man. And so. I, I, I kind of want to touch on that because mm-hmm. um, this was like, I got my car last year in August. Yep. Before I got my car, like I, like I, I was that kid that yeah. would freak out at every sick car. Like, I remember when I was growing up, the guy across the street had a sick Maserati. Like, sick. Like, the most top-of-the-line one you can get. Like, I remember yeah. it'd be, like, 6 a.m., getting ready for school, and I'd hear him fired up, and I would just, like, stand outside and listen because I just loved it. Was it, like, um, Gran Turismo? Like, the I don't, I, I don't know, man. It was, <laughs> I, was, I was really little, but it was sick. Like, it was dope. Blacked out. Like, it looked good. And I, cool. just, I loved cars. Like, every time a car dropped, I'd be like, like I'd be that kid. That's awesome. Um, and then just last year, um, when I started really getting into shooting like sick cars, mm. I remember my boy, his name's uh, David. He has like I think he got the first bagged uh, G eighty two M four competition in like oh really Canada. And this no was way. Year. Um, and he put on bags. He has like these like custom like it's nasty that are like ten k. <laughs> yeah. Sick. I remember texting him like, "Yo, what like, color spec is it?" It's, it's black. Oh, it's sick. It's so clean. <laughs> and I was just like, "Dude, I want to do a video for this." Yeah. Um, and then after the video, like, I I just had the balls, and I was like, "Man, can I drive it?" <laughs> he's like, "He's like, fuck yeah, dude." And that moment right there, like, best game thing changer ever. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I, I it, it was a vision that I had inside of my mind. Like I, I literally remember the exact vision I had because growing up, my dream car was an M4 always. Mm. Um, 
It's funny that has that they're shadies, but <laughs> aside from that, aside from that, <laughs> you're cheating um, on the homies, man. I, I know, I know, but I like my Benz better now. It's better than an M4. Um, <laughs> and I just like I stepped on it, and it was. Oh, I still remember. It was like the most beautiful sound. Like it felt like I was. Like it felt like I just like escaped reality in a sense. Like it was pulling back the G forces. That's um, sick. It was crazy because it was an, like a literal exact vision that I had. No way. Exact. It was like deja vu, but real. Yeah, because I, I vision like I vision at night. I vision mm. in the morning. Um, and then just cool to see that thing like that happen. Mm. Like a few months later, I got my car. It was just like last year was like the most wild year of my life. I and love it, was, it, bro. It was just like man, like it's just so cool to see that you can put your mind to something, and that shit will happen. A lot quicker than you think it is. You might have to go through, you know, a month of of like hard suffering from changing from your negative habits over to the positive ones. Mm. But that month is like, it, it, it doesn't matter because like months after that, like things are just it happens firing, so bro. quick yeah. because when you're vibrating at such a high level and you're such a high energy person, mm-hmm. you're just giving it, giving life. I believe that what you give into life is what you receive back. So 100%. if you're giving it you're all every day, you know, life is going to have a present for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, no one's seen anybody that's like worked hard, put in the time day after day, after day, after day that didn't eventually get the results. Mm -hmm. So people, a lot of people will go and say life's unfair. And I think there's things in life that are unfair, you know, like nobody knows if a loved one's going to pass away or something happens that's negative. You get a bad review from your doctor or whatever, but life in terms of input output is incredibly fair. If you put in, it's like the best analogy is like the gym. If you go to the gym and you get good information and you track your diet and you, and you put in good work, you will 100% get out of the gym, what you put into the gym. And I feel like life in general with work, especially with work is 100% the gym. Like that metaphor is across. And I think that's why guys that go to the gym tend to do a little bit better in life than the, you know, guys that don't, um, in terms of being like a top 1% across all areas. Um, but life is very fair. It is. What you put in, you get out. Yeah. And um, yeah, there's a lot of people that just go, oh, you know, life's unfair and they're beat down, whatever. But a lot of those people, you know, either didn't put out or they're putting it only, only putting out when it's convenient yeah. um, or self-serving, like yeah. super self-serving. So it's interesting. It is interesting. Yeah. And I'm glad I figured that out at a young age. Bro, you're so young to figure that out. When I was 19, I wanted, I was like living in Australia, like surfing on, I was surfing, bro. I was surfing every day. It was like the laziest period of my life, but I really didn't know what I wanted to do then. I thought I wanted to play in bands and looking back, I'm like, I'm pretty glad I didn't just do that. Cause I feel like now I have the opportunity to create more long-term impact. And it's funny cause when you're going through life, sometimes you think things are like, why didn't that happen? Or I did all these things. So why didn't this happen? Um, a lot of times you look back and just go like, I didn't have the skills. Like I, you might be, you might think you're doing something towards something, but you're missing key components yep. that can only be developed either through a mentor, through trial and error, like learning experience, like burning your own fire kind of thing, or, you know, books or getting knowledge. Yep. So super interesting. It is, man. And so many, it's, it's, it, I can understand why some people look at, you know, I would, I, I call it the because it is a grind. Yeah. Um, I understand why like a lot of people look at it and are afraid of it because it's so many different areas that you have to hit on. Yeah. To get better every single day. Like that person that like saw like, let's say your routine or my routine, mm. and, uh, your routine is probably like 10 times crazier than mine. Maybe, even, maybe not. Yeah, it definitely is. It definitely <laughs> is. But even, even like at my age, like they'd see like, you know, gym, mm-hmm. read, meditate, even those three, they'd be like, no. Yeah. You know, like I just like, want to be <laughs> yeah. like that, right? I just want to... Whatever I want, right? so, what else are you gonna do though bro that's why i don't understand like people that are like uh, like a weekend for example i i'm sorry i have not had a weekend in forever not because i don't i can't have a weekend like if i wanted a weekend i could take a weekend yeah i just don't understand like three days off or like two days of not working like what else are you going to do like what else is there to do like go like and that's what's crazy is like my brother and i have got super blessed lately because we've been able to buy every car we've ever wanted and like we can kind of do whatever we want and it's like yeah, getting the cars is fun, but like we did a trip out to the East Coast in two days when we got back, I was so ready to fucking work. Like, what else yeah. are you going to do? Like, what do you drive around for another day and go and eat more steaks? And like, <laughs> yeah, it's fun, but there's gotta be more. It's not like that's not the thing that fulfills you. 
Like it makes, it's a lot of fun. It's dope as hell. Oh yeah. But you get true fulfill. I believe if you can train yourself to get true fulfillment from the grind of like really fucking working hard, you will be completely unstoppable to any of your goals because you love the process of yeah, what right. that is. So it's a mindset shift though. Cause we're not trained. We're not taught that like growing up. Most people are yes. never taught that. I, I say it's, um, I've, I've spoke about this before. Hmm. It's like a mind, a mindset, like almost switch. It's like you have a switch in your brain, like an on off. Except hmm. one, let's say the off is how we all, all were raised and you know, a scarcity fearful mindset. If you can flip it, like you said, to really get that, that energy and that excitement from the grind, then yeah. you're going to be unstoppable. And like, I've had so many periods in my life where I feel like that is fully on. I'm unstoppable, but it's like, I'm still in the, I'm still in the stage of like trying to make that as consistent as possible, which I'm pretty proud of myself for doing. Yeah. That's dope. Um, but like, it's, it's that, it's that mental switch, man. And it's, mm. it's key. Yeah. It's key. It's just like, just flick it on and enjoy it. Cause now when I do like, dude, I can't go and party. Yeah. Like I can't go like I, I, a girl that like, I really, really like, 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 mm. like a rock. <laughs> Top like, dive. Like, like, yeah. 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 Like, I call it a rock. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, like, she, she could probably fly away. Like, <laughs> really? like, she's like, a, a Dubai ever, first class. Yeah, like, yeah. Like love at first sight type of thing. Last night, she was like literally begging me because she, she lives in Toronto. I live in Waterloo mm. and she's like, I'm in Waterloo tonight. I'm like, oh, sick. You want to just come over, just hang out? Yeah. And um, like, I didn't ask that. I, I asked it after she invited me out mm. to like the club. And I'm like, I told her, I'm, I didn't say no. But yeah. I was like, I never go out. I never go to the club. Yeah. Not because I don't necessarily enjoy the fun, but because I, I can't. I, I, I'm all about who you're It's the shift, bro. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like yeah. I, I, I enjoy, I'd rather be at the gym feeling mm. like, you know, I'm going to puke mm-hmm. than feeling like I'm going to puke from alcohol. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 100%. So dude. it's it's like, it's just a, it's just a switch. It's like there's like um, a, almost like a, a, a bubble border in life. And there's one side of it that you just like, the other side, the, mm-hmm. the one that we're not on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other side, you just like, it's like going through like this thing. And once you cross over, you can't go back. Bro, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Once you're in that space, there's no way that you go back. And like you said, it might be fun. It's not that it's not fun or whatever. But I also have, a, and maybe you're similar to this, but like if I do end up in that space for a little bit, it's it's like, it's not hard to get back into work mode, but it's like this momentum. So like momentum in life is, is like hard to build. Then oh, yeah. once you build momentum and then you see the results of that momentum, it's impossible to like yes. ever shut that off because you're yes. like, why the fuck would I go back there? Like yes, it doesn't dude. make any sense. And you yes. might go like just to like get some balance. I do think life is like, there's a lot of really rich guys out there that don't know how to live their life, which I think is oh, tragic. Yeah, like, um, but whatever the guy that runs uh, Berkshire Hathaway, whatever his name is, mm. buddy. Okay. <laughs> like Buffett. <laughs> yeah. Warren Buffett, that guy. But are you kidding me? Yeah. Nerd. How do you have <laughs> hundreds of billions like in his bank account probably? And yeah. he, he guy asked him like, what car do you drive? He's like, well, like I cheaped out on like a $10,000. Yeah. Like, dude, are you, are you nuts? Are you nuts? Enjoy that. What do you think money was put on earth for? Yeah. To be, you know, enjoyed. Yeah. The people that have that money obviously invest and he's at a point where he doesn't need to fucking do anything else. <laughs> But he's still like, oh man, one hundred percent, man. I, I'm, I can't spend this. It's ridiculous. And then you get these guys, and they're like, oh, like, uh, you know, they're talking to a billionaire, like Buffett or whatever. Yeah. And they go, what are some tips that the average person can do? And they're like, you know, uh, watch your spending on coffee. Coffee, bro. Coffee's five bucks a day. You're not going to be a millionaire cutting your coffee out. So there's parts of life that are worth the enjoyment of the spend. If you like coffee fucking drink coffee like don't let five dollars change your quality of life because quality of life things i think are super super important you're gonna have to look back at your life in 60 years and be like i did fuck all or you can look back and go holy fuck remember that memory of this and we fucking did that we got stuck in that country we got arrested in this country like those are the stories that are fucking awesome and you can't do those unless you're spending the money to live a certain way and you don't even have to like go balls to the wall and like drop in fucking millions every year but like you can create an insanely exciting life um and i also think like growing up kind of like not 
super poor, poor, but like not with money to spend yeah. was super valuable because it taught us how to have fun with nothing. And so like, if you can have fun with nothing and live like an exciting life and just like making up cool stories, then when you add in like, you know, the ability to be able to kind of do whatever you want financially, that just, it's like the world's your oyster, man. Crazy. Like it's so sick. So same, same kind of story here, man. Like, mm. like I, I grew up and parents were together. Like they, they were doing well for themselves. Um, yeah. And like, it was like, I was like, I was living a good life. Mm. Like I was playing hockey. They were paying for my hockey. I enjoyed it, but I never had the opportunity to go to my parents and be like, Hey, can I have this, 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 and this, and this? And they'd be like, yeah, it wasn't that type of life. And then my parents got divorced. And then after that, it was like, Mm. it was my mom raising three kids on her on her own so crazy we had to learn how to have fun with just like us and playing road hockey and sadly i, I don't see any kids playing road hockey anymore it drives me did none nuts, they're all man. they're all this bro i know literally all I, this if i put my phone away because i keep <laughs> yeah. having it in my pocket because like it's, it's vibing like, yeah, yeah. And, and, like i i walk in a room like I, I i have really good friends of mine um but i just i can't i can't hang around you know people like that mm. um like for example if i'm sitting there and i'm with my buddies and i'm playing the guitar and singing and they're all on their phones like yeah i don't want to be there yeah i, I don't want to be there right i i i believe that that like i said mm. this is a matrix mm. that is another <laughs> matrix inside of a matrix and who knows maybe there's gonna be another one if inside of Bro, that maybe one, we're right? living in one of these right now Dude, who that's, fucking knows that's, a, that's an analogy Mm. I think that's the metaphor. Um, Analogy. Whatever, maybe. Yeah. Simulation, bro. Like, <laughs> it's fucking English class. <laughs> fucking English class. I hated it. I hated it. Um, but I heard, I heard uh, something like that where it's like, okay, what if the universe? Because they did a study where the they took mm. the universe and they took a brain and they have like the exact same like characteristics. Oh, that's interesting. So I was thinking, I'm like, okay, what if we're just in a brain? And yeah, bro. That, and then there's that dude, and then he has a friend, and he has a brain too. Like, what if we're like, dude? Th there's the the options are like limitless. Literally limitless, bro. In. Yeah. So it's like, I I've started to just like live. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, and stop thinking about all this like pointless stuff. Yeah. And it's just like I'm I'm just here. Yeah. Just, just make the most out of it, and like, game, man. yeah, it is a I video swear game, bro. To God, I, like, hundred percent. I'll be ripping around in like my car at night. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's GTA, bro. It's bro, 100%. GTA. There's so many things. Like, I look back, like, my brother and I, we were, like, pretty competitive growing up. Yep. And we would put ourselves in some of the craziest situations where we should have died every single time. And we're like, they're still alive. Nothing's really bad happened. Like, I mean, oh. I, we broke some bones and, like, had to go to the hospital and stuff. But, like, nothing's killed us yet. And it, <laughs> a lot of it should have. <laughs> so it's like, it's just a game, dude. Like, and it's like, it, you take all... I've. I like taking like financial risk. It's like, I, I've never gambled and I think it's a good thing that I don't. Um, but I love like high risk scenarios where stuff stacked against me. Like I fucking love that shit. That's good though. Because it's like, I have no problem at the end of the day. Would I want to start again at zero? No, but multiple times in my life I've started again at zero. And there's something about like that initial thing where like, I think as you go through life, you'll, you'll like figure out your strengths. Right. And, um, f on, uh, for me, I love the grindy startup phase. I'm a terrible, and this is one of those negative things that I would always tell myself. I'm a terrible business owner. Yep. Um, and I've learned I'm actually a pretty good business owner, but I had to learn a lot of different skill sets that didn't come naturally to me. Yep. Um, I, I'm a great visionary though, and really good at execution for like just taking actionable steps immediately. Yeah. But when it comes to like teams, SOPs, like structure, like operations, that shit's mind numbing to me, dude. Like I would just rather go, okay, it's 90% there. Fucking move on <laughs> next. What's the next thing to go and just like start yeah. from the ground up. Um, so you, you get through these shifts and it's interesting because I think there's a lot of value in both. And if you can find people along the way that compliment you, I don't know if your partner, like business oh, partner geez. is complimentary skill sets, but it's, if they are fucking brilliant. It's like yin and yang. Really? Yeah, man. It's the, the story is crazy. Um, how him and yeah, I tell me about it. Um, so I was doing it all myself. Um, and it's, a, it's good to do it by yourself, but it, like, I hate seeing creators that are huge, that are like 500k followers, 100k, 200k, and they're still doing it by themselves because they think, you know, they're the best. Great to think that, have mm -hmm. that confidence, go fucking keep killing it. Um, but 
you, I, I believe that you have to have, like you said, complementary skill sets mm-hmm. around you because without that, you're not gonna you're not gonna reach those like sky's the limit goals. Hundred percent, right? bro. You're your ceiling. Yeah. Like your skill set is your ceiling. So unless you can learn the skill and become better to raise your ceiling, you're always yeah. gonna be capped at your weak point. And instead of taking that time to learn that skill set, just bring someone and stacks it, you know, twice, three times as high. Just bro. bring a person in and being able to, you know, I, I heard someone say this recently. They're like, if you're not able to split, you know, half the bread or a little piece of the bread, mm. you're never going to make it anywhere. And that's smart, like, bro. I, I, I like, <clears throat> money has never been something that to me that like, I, I, I don't know. It's, mm. I don't have like a, a love or hate relationship with it. Cause it's just a number on a screen piece of paper. Um, and I'm okay with splitting, you know, literally half of the video with my partner because, you know, I, I understand that he's a person too. Mm-hmm. He needs the funds. I need the funds, but I'm good. I'll give him half no matter what situation I'm mm-hmm. in. And because we're both putting in, you know, half of the work or both, you know, it, I'm, I'm okay with giving up mm-hmm. a piece of the pie. It's not my pie. Sure. You know, money, money's not mine. <laughs> it came from somewhere. Money's just transferring around the world all the time, right? Yeah. So if I can, you know, let people eat, like, mm-hmm. like at the table with like Jesus. Yeah. He was yeah. letting people eat, you know, he was duplicating fish out in the field or whatever he was 100%, doing. 100%. Right? And whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, he was giving. And like, the, I, you know who Tony Robbins is? Of course, bro. The secret <laughs> yeah, to living. Absolutely. He was like one of living. my biggest yeah. like online mentors growing up. <laughs> yeah, man. Like, he's, yeah. he says the secret to living is giving. Mm-hmm. And if you can't give, mm-hmm. how the fuck are you going to receive? A hundred percent, dude. I, I never give with like with the intent of receiving from that person because mm. that's almost like you're taking from and not giving. Yeah. So I always give with it. It's like here, like mm-hmm. Cre- it's like creating good. value, bro. Yeah. Like, and our one of our core values at James is like, um, give value first, first, and ask for something second. Yep. Um, if you give value up front, again, it's without expectation. But if you just give value, like even this shit, like you're literally dropping bombs for guys to go and fucking better their skill set and, you know, sharing how you do things and how you've been able to become good at what you're doing. That's value. You're yep. giving value. And the cool thing about life is it reciprocates. So like that all comes back around. So the more value you can give out and like people are so worried about, Oh, but it's proprietary or it's this or that. And yeah, maybe in the medical and legal field. Sure. Like that might be more or the engineering manufacturing space, but in our field, like in terms of like, service base for like, you know, media and creative, I look at it as way more collaborative than competitive. And yes, it's competitive, but I'd rather win and align with a lot of A players than sit there being the A player and alienating myself in a pool of like fucking what could be really cool. Right. And I don't think there's a lot of people that have taken that mentality. So it's really cool to hear you like say that, especially like at a younger age, because a lot of people I've at least that I've known and how I was at that age was the opposite of that. And it was something that looking back at my life probably stifled my growth. I was way more, I want a hundred percent of this. I want a hundred percent rather than going fuck 10% of something that's a billion is a lot better than fucking a hundred percent of something that's a hundred thousand, exactly. you know? <laughs> exactly. So it's very limiting. Yeah, man. And mm. that's like, I'm very grateful that, you know, my partner and I met because if that never have, happen you know i'd still be doing it by myself and it takes it it, it just like we complement each other so well you know he's a beast at editing mm. he's a beast at you know visioning and i'm i'm amazing at visioning coming up with stuff and then we both do that and i'm i have a very valuable business side of things mm. he's very talented at you know the content creation all that stuff i i am too but i'll, I'll give it to him he's just, he's a fucking beast pat you're a fucking beast like he's a, <laughs> shout out pat yeah, pat pat's Let's a sick go. guy man pat's <laughs> awesome like i love him i'll do anything for the guy um and it, it's just our skill sets complement so well because if i can do all the business side i can mm. close the deals yeah. i can you know get the clients or maybe he'll get a client but it'll send him my way so i can talk numbers you know receive the payment yep. deposit whatever it may be and then he does the editing side the shooting side yeah. that type of stuff it's, it's literally like a perfect split and they that's complimenting so nicely. So I'm just very grateful that I have that opportunity. Um, and you know, for anyone that's listening to this, get people in your life that mm-hmm. are going to raise you up, not bring you down, get mm-hmm. people that are going to make your skill set better. Make people that have a good skill set, make them come in, you know, don't be afraid to take a risk with someone, yeah. not on someone, but with someone, you know, make them part of, you know, what you're doing. And, 
um, I just believe that, you know, teamwork does make the dream work, right? Like, uh, how does an NHL hockey team win the Stanley Cup? Not because the goalie's good, you know, because they've got a fucking team of guys that when they're in that dressing room, like, fuck yeah, boys, let's yeah. go, you know? Defense is on lock tonight, forward, we're going crazy, I'm going to snipe a bar down, you know, Hell like, yeah. they're, they're, they're a team. Yeah. And like you have here, man, like, this inspires the fuck out of me mm. because you have a team and you all are feeding into it mm. and look how crazy this shit is man yeah, yeah like you like you could probably touch on that a lot yeah 100 like, i agree with you 100 percent. and i i ran like the solo running gun thing like um like i said like my biggest ceiling before was i want 100 percent of this like and I, I was always skeptical of bringing people in um more so because i was worried of being like taken advantage of in those situations um and also just not knowing really myself enough to lead Right. So I think it really falls back on me. Like uh, people could point the finger and go, oh, but I was with this or that. Really, I, I think it was just I wasn't in a position where I felt comfortable to lead. Yeah. Um, and so uh, but then you bring people on and you realize it's like, yeah, their skill sets allow you to grow. You then create more opportunity. And again, it's like that compounding effect. You create more opportunity and then like your scale becomes like, you know, from from us to go from zero to one employee was like a year. And then it was like every month then after was like at a ploy, right? So it's like you, you're then scaling. So then in year two, it's like your first year takes like a year to do 100K a year. Yep. And then the next year, you're literally doing like just under a milli. And then a year from that, you're doing over 2 million. Like it's like the compound effect is just so crazy. It's unreal. And um, yeah, so I, I think it's super sick. It's definitely a, a huge thing. Turnaround times and like how you guys get clients, like what does that look like? So client kind of stuff, I was doing outreach a lot, like mm -hmm. when I first got it going. Just um, like DMs or yeah, like what? DMs, emails, yep. I, I, cold calling, I don't know how it works. I don't know if it works too well with, you know, what we do in Bro, a fucking, sense. It doesn't work that well. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's tough, man. Like I, I've tried it with what we do. It's not, it's not, it's not that type of sales call, mm. right? It's more of like, I'm trying to help you make money with this video we're going to provide. Yep. So cold calls don't really work. It's kind of like a back and forth email thread or back and forth Instagram DM or just a phone call yep. where you just like, you're, you don't call them out of the blue, but you, you know, you set up a thing and set up a discovery call or something. Yeah. And, then, yeah. Um, and that's honestly how that, like I got the clients at first um, when I was doing it myself, just DMs and it kind of, cool. it sucks doing outreach. Like it's not, it's not fun. It's not fun, but when you land the deal, it's like fuck yeah. Bro, sales something. is better than sex, dude. Yeah. Literally, Woo. it is like it is like railing a line. <laughs> like, <laughs> like there's nothing better than sales. Like, dude, there's a awesome. dopamine hit. There's a chemical thing that goes off in your brain that is like, it's very addictive, and it could be addictive, positive, or addictive, destructive. Like, sales is in, and that's why a lot of people in the sales position, like just like real talk, have like a lot of like alcohol issues yeah. like with drinking and stuff because it compounds it's like it's like the high it's a constant dopamine hit and it's like uh there's a lot of guys in sales that are really like really like pretty fucked up um just because of, it's like a chemical reaction man so like yep. it gets like but it's also sick it's like the coolest shit in the world man it's, <laughs> it's like a constant high but the lows are low and the highs are high oh, as I know. fuck without the lows you can't have the highs and without the highs you can't have the lows <laughs> so i'm kind of glad that you know we're all able to feel like shit once in a while mm -hmm. Uh, Cause then when you do make that sale, yeah, it's <clears> fucking <throat> great, dude. Yeah, man. Oh yeah. Mean, now we get clientele just literally off of engagement. Cool. Um, people hit me up. People hit Pat up. Mm -hmm. um, you guys have pretty good following. Like your your personal following yeah, is like pretty great. It's, it's okay. Yeah. I, mean, I, I want for GTA is pretty want, good, man. To, I want it to be more. Yeah. Um, but it'll come. It'll yeah. Come. Um, and yeah, just off of engagement, just like yeah. that. Pat told me this recently. And it really made me dial in on like the quality of the content, mm. not the quantity. Mm. Um, because he told me, he's like, dude, like if we can take all of our focus and put it strictly on the, vi like the quality of the videos we're doing and like how good they are, we will get clientele out of just that alone. And we mm. won't need to work on, you know, the outreach side of things mm. because the content's so good that, you know, just you just have a referral. Of, yeah, and referral. Then, yeah. And when it gets to that point, it's awesome. Like it, we're kind of there. Mm -hmm. Obviously it's going to take some more time. Um, I did have a guy out in India doing like email lists and stuff okay. for me. Like appointment setting um, or like. Not, not appointments. I'm actually looking for like a solid appointment setter, but I don't okay. want them. I don't want them to be from 
India. Sure. No yeah. offense to India. No, I think you need like local. Like yeah. it's just people are bombarded by now, man, because everybody ah, man. moved to that, and they're just like they hear like they pick up the and they or they see like the grammatical things and the email. Like there's a lot of things that instantly turn off, yes. and now you have to be dialed in every fucking area because it is competitive. Yeah, man. So so I I stopped with I stopped with that, um, and now I'm kind of back to just referrals. Yeah. Um, doing some outreach, and just really focus on putting out the best content. Cool. Um, and I'm also like right now, I just want to lock in retainer clients. Nice. So I don't have to go back to zero at the start of the month. Bro, smart as fuck. That, I, I will tell you like the best tip that I can give you as a creator is to try to shift your projects and your retainer to a 50-50 split minimum. So the only way that I've been able to scale this company is by moving to retainer. So right now I think we're about 60-40 split. Uh, last couple of months we had crazy projects come in, but overall it's usually about a 60, 40 split, 60% retainer work, 40% project load. Um, the reason for that is you can manage your cash flows as you probably know, like yeah. you might have a month where you do fucking amazing. Like, like I remember as a solo guy, I would have like a month where I do like 20, 30 grand. And then the next month I do like two grand and like, imagine you're carrying a team of like 10 guys. Yeah. And then you have like a killer month where you do 100K or 200K. And then the next month you do seven grand. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> so <laughs> by having that retainer, that is the only way. It's the literal secret of how we've scaled a creative agency um, in the production space was just moving our clients to retainer. And how you do that is just do exactly what you said. Do really fucking good work that gets an ROI or somehow to show that they're getting an ROI on that content. And they will pay that fucking bill every month till the end of time. Because if you knew every time you spent 10 grand and you make 20 grand, you're going to fucking pay that bill every fucking month, dude. <laughs> You'd be stupid not to, right? So that, <laughs> it's cool that you say that because that is, if I could give you one tip or any creator that's listening to this, one tip is try to build retainer. And there's a whole other process there, how you get to that point, but um, that is the key to scale a company. If like your goal is three years to be doing something like this, Fucking retainer is the only way you're going to be able to yep. do that and employ a team. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, retainers are hard, man, to mm. like land land a company that wants that because, in my opinion, they're going to have to be making you know more than fifty grand a month yep. to be able to do something like that. Um, and you know, like I would lowest I'd go on a retainer would be like twenty five hundred bucks a month. Yep. Would, like, you wouldn't even get that much content out of that. Like you maybe get like know, bro. one good video, two good videos. Maybe like, like eight shorts that are yeah. sub thirties and just like some talking head with B roll. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> yeah. nothing nothing too crazy. But like even if I could get ten people on twenty five hundred, that's mm -hmm. twenty G's a month. Hundred percent. So that's that's the that's kinda like the block I'm having right now is I'm trying to figure out where I can find these people. Um mm. closing them. I got it. I know I got yeah. that. Um, and you do great work. Yeah. So there, it's yeah. just finding the people. Um, yeah. I know they're. I know it's gonna happen. If yeah. You put in the fucking work and all that. Like we were talking about momentum. Yep. I uh, one time I got caught up for like a week. Um, I just was in my head. This was like eight months ago. Okay. I went to my brothers because like we're really close. And I'm yeah. Like, Guys, like, dude, I feel like I'm like failing right now and only been like a couple days like i get worked up like that like, um, you like zero and, to hundred and, 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 and my brother looked me in the eye and he goes man all that work that you fucking put in isn't just gonna evaporate mm. and i'm like fuck yeah <laughs> i just got right back to You're it because i'm like i built i built all this momentum and i feel like if you have enough momentum built you could stop doing shit for a fucking a mm. month and go right back to it because momentum is it's with you the only way to kill momentum is to quit 100 mm percent -hmm. Yeah. It, it's like muscle memory, dude. Yeah, it's man. like you stop going to the gym for like two months after you like lifted for like five years. You'll be pretty much back to where you left off in a month. Exactly. Right? A month, two months. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I will say uh, to your point on the retainers, um, the retainers, uh, typically the businesses that have the most money to spend are the ones that are the least sexy mm -hmm. in terms of uh, like manufacturing shops. Yeah. Um, Automotive dealerships great too. They have like dollars to spend, um, but anything that has like, you know, yeah, manufacturing a fucking massive one or medical, yeah. um, they're typically the jobs that like. My whole shift was like, I'm gonna just try to take on some jobs that aren't that sexy, even though it's not yeah. really the stuff I wanted to shoot. Which was really tough as a creator to like shift my focus to that. Um, but my thought process behind it was like, if we do this, and I take on those shitty, shittier jobs, like not shitty jobs, but like shitty for a creator because they're not going to want to bid on them. 
it will allow me to secure more capital to be able to do other jobs that we actually passion projects or yes. you know go fucking buy cars and like do cool yeah, trips yeah, and whatever yeah, else yeah. um so that definitely it helped and that that was that would be like again if i could offer any tip to anybody watching or yourself or whatever it's just um a lot of those guys that have like really good money to spend a lot of times they're like in the non-sexy non-sexy like, businesses but it's yeah. as tough as a creator to get there because then it feels like you're constantly feeling like oh, but my work doesn't represent the work that I know I can do. So there's yep. this constant battle, man. It's tough as a creative. Yep. Yep. But if it's putting food on the table, then that's the thing. That kind of blocks out that one side of that. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. I'm going to no go find done. some boring fucking business. Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> I'm going to go start looking up like dentist shops. Dude. Like they've got fucking money. Man. Brother, I, uh, so I have a buddy. All he does is tic- he, he, does tic- he manages TikToks for dentists. Okay, that's all he does. He's so niched, it's insane. It's yeah, only dentists and within the dental space, it's like people that have like, um, that do like veneer, like very, uh, aesthetic work. Yep. So it's super, super niche. The guy does, uh, $2.4 million a year over 200 K a month, basically. Uh, and all he does is UGC content brother. He doesn't own a camera. He shoots all the shit on his iPhone. Or maybe 200 grand a month, 200 grand a month, bro. I'm not exaggerating. Like I'm not fucking with you on this 200 grand a month shooting from his fucking cell phone or he will have the, the dental secretary, whatever he will send them a shot list. They'll shoot it. And then he'll put the content together with his team, manage it, post it. That's all he does. And only on TikTok, bro. No IG, no Facebook, just fucking TikTok. 200 grand a month. I'm with a, the with a fucking shop. cell phone. Yeah, I'm going to the with a fucking shop. cell phone. Because if you think about it, it's like, okay, that's only a hundred, that's only a hundred dentists at two grand a month. You know what I mean? Like when you break it down like that, that's like, or oh fuck, that's only let's say they're paying you for it. Okay, it's 50. It's fucking 50 dentists at four grand a month. And like you gotta think of dental office, right? Like they're probably doing a million to 1.5 a year to dump 40k, 50k a year into their content. Or if you're only building them two grand a month, twenty four thousand a year, and you're gonna that's get X reach, bro, it's fuck all. And they can definitely turn that, you know, however much money they spend. Let's say they spend forty. Yeah. Most likely, even if it, even if the content doesn't do what you know both sides thought it would, sure, they still get you know a twenty, thirty, forty grand return on it. And if you look at it from the business side, right, it's like okay. Uh, I've got a dental office. Their average product sells for, let's call it 6,000 bucks for a fucking Invisalign or whatever, right? Okay. And what's their margin on that? Mm, Maybe 30%. Okay. So two grand. Uh, I need to sell one more Invisalign person per fucking month based off all the content we're shooting. So when you break it down like that, it's like, that's a no brainer. Like that guy's again. Okay. Your investment's two grand a month. I have to sell how many? Okay. I got to get one more client through your door that spends money with you. If I can't do that off of a month's worth of content over stacked yeah. over a few months and get some uh, momentum and consistency there, I'd be like, fire me. That would be my sales pitch. I'd come in and just be like, hey, if, if I can't bring you one more client a month, fucking fire me. I'll refund all your fucking money. And when you break it down like that, it's crazy, bro. Because wow. you only have to bring them in one more client. It's like a car dealer. Same thing. It's like, okay, I'll charge a car dealer $3,000 a month to shoot their content. What does that mean? I, we need to sell six more cars this year or uh, this month. Okay. So if, if I'm if I'm allocating three thousand dollars worth of production work to you for content, if we can't sell six more cars a month based on all the content we're putting together for you, fucking fire me. Like I'll fire myself yeah. and be like, okay, see you, bye. Okay. <laughs> so that's how I'd like start to reframe that shift, or even your sales pitch is like, okay, what's your product cost? What's your margin on it? Okay. So we need to, in order for this to make sense, where you're going to spend two three thousand dollars a month with us. I need to sell this. You need to sell this many consistently over the next three months to show our value. Okay, let's do a three month fucking trial. If I can't, if I can't consistently do this over the next two to three months for you, and you can't see that value, fuck, I'll fire myself. What are you wow. gonna lose? Eight, uh, six grand over three months? Big deal. Wow. Right. So yeah, it's like if you can get into that shift, because at the end of the day, the business owner just wants to see an ROI, and that's where a lot of creatives really fuck up because they forget that like the business owner although they want to see good shots and they want to stand out and they want to see something cool at the end of the day, they just want to make more money. Yeah. Right. So like, yeah. At the end of the day, unless they're just hiring you for a passion project, um, they need to be able to grow their business. So I don't know if that's valuable or whatever, but that was a big mindset Dude, shift. That, for, is for mm. that is valuable. That is valuable. I'm going to go apply that. Hell yeah, dog. Apply that <laughs> no, that's huge. That's huge. Thank you. Of course, bro. Is network. And then the other part of it is, is like, you get to know people that like, imagine we just met each other, right? We're at a car meet or whatever. 
it would take like probably like six to seven months to cover the same amount of ground we covered in the last hour and a bit in terms of like knowing yes. about your past and like that kind of yes. stuff. So it's kind of cool. Again, it like it warps space time. Yeah. So it's like you just like instantly achieve a certain like level of like communication and closeness with somebody that you wouldn't otherwise achieve yep. without doing a format like this. So it's kind of cool. It is cool, man. It but, is cool. Yeah. This is uh this is the black room that warps space and time. That's man. right, bro. Dude. It's the fucking time machine. Time pod. The time pod. <laughs> time you, should, pod. You, you should put a sign out there. That's the new uh, podcast name is overexposed is now changed to time, time pod. pod. That's yeah. a good that's a good name though. Mm-hmm. You got time pod or overexposed? You got overexposed the shots, man. I love Bro, that. Overexposed is, like, yeah. Smart, dude. It was cool, right? Yeah, yeah. It was yeah. Cool. I can't take credit for it, actually. Maddie, again, going back to like the idea of like compounding people, other people's skill sets, I'm not good at naming things. Like, I couldn't even decide on a name to name our company. So I was like, uh, James Media. I don't know. It's like my dad's name. He's not involved in the company, but it's in honor of him. But I'm not good at naming stuff. And we sat on this pod name for fucking like three, four months. I was like, I got nothing, guys. I was like, let's just call it like the James pod. <laughs> I don't fucking no. And then Maddie was like, I was away and I came back and they're like, oh, Maddie got the sickest name for the pod. I was like, what is it? And he's like, overexposed. And I'm like, bro, that's fucking sick. Cause it's like talking with other like business owners in space. It's like going deep dive kind of thing. And it fucking flips back to media and production. So I was like, it's dope as hell. It's sick. So yeah, very cool. Yeah, man. But, uh, but yeah. So um, what do you guys edit on? After Effects and Premiere Pro. Okay, why Premiere? Over like um, Final Cut. It's what we've been using, man. Like yep. on it since I was 11, so mm, almost nine years of skill. I'm not going to change it for something else, right? And I know that Adobe, makes sense. Adobe's pretty much like on top of what they do with that stuff. They've always been kind of an industry leader. Yep. Um, and I know they're not going to go anywhere. All I can really see them yeah. is expanding and getting better. So yep. maybe a few things about, you know, After Effects and Premiere that other programs like DaVinci mm. um, or Final Cut yep. don't have. For sure. And great. People can use those, but I'm not going to give up the skill. Like we're talking about skill that, you know, Pat and I have to switch a program. Um, and I just really like the workflow and everything. I've gotten really used to it. Is like After Effects, people say it's like one of the harder programs yeah. to like learn and edit on. But to me, it's like so easy. It's like second nature now. Yeah, man. It's just like, Muscle memory, you click this, click this, all these shortcuts, cut the clips off, you yeah. know, all, all that stuff. And it's, it's just, I just love it, dude. And the, out, the output that it gives you on videos, like if you know export settings and you know what you're doing and how to edit and the mm. flow of it. Money. Yeah. Yeah. You're right on the money, man. Nice. Yeah. Um, what are some tips? Like you, like I said, you guys have like pretty decent following. You guys put out like really engaging content. Like what are some tips that people can do to like, get better engagement or like put out better content? Okay, so to put out better content, just got to put out better content. Like, Fair it, enough. It, you just like, it's hard. It's, it's easier said than done. Mm-hmm. But like I said, Pat really has talked to me a lot about the quality of the content and really just putting all of our focus into that instead of more of the outreach side of things because mm-hmm. that in turn gets the engagement. And so what? One, two videos, however many are not going to do well, but you can't let that let you down because it's still out there, number one. It's still on social media. Someone's going to see it every day. Yeah. Um, but if you can really dial in on the quality mm. and just strictly, how can we make this video the best it possibly can? How can we make something that no one can put out? Mm-hmm. How can we add our own touch? Mm. Um, obviously, it's good to get inspiration and stuff. But just like really just locking in on the video you're doing. Because obviously like having a million projects going at once is awesome. But like yep. if you can dial one in, boom, done. One in, boom, done. Just like really hone in. That's a word, right? Hone in, I think. Yeah, hone Never in. Never used that in my yeah, life. Yeah, it was perfect, bro. Um, you fucking and, nailed it. And, and, uh, <laughs> and just really just focus on that quality, man. Like that's that's what really sets it apart. And like when I was doing solo, like I wasn't like, I'm pretty I'm pretty good. But obviously with Pat, he's so fucking talented. Like he just has like the, the gift of God for editing. Yeah. Um, 
And so how does that flow work? So do you still shoot a yes. lot of stuff and yes. then you pass it off to Pat and Pat yep. rips through the edits? Yep. That's yep. dope. And so obviously then you guys are on the same page, like shot list beforehand. This is kind of like what we're after. This yep. is kind of the flow. This is like our like rough start. Do you storyboard shit or just yeah, like... Yeah. We, still, we storyboard. Cool. That's the first thing we do. Yep. We send it to the client um, and then they make whatever edits they want. Most of the time the storyboard's like really good because like we said, we're both like visionaries mm. um, and we can just see something before it even happens. Do you hand draw storyboards or do you like fucking no, use just, program for just it? Just write it out on a doc. Like it's Sweet. not, we call it a storyboard. It's not even like necessarily like pictures. Bro, that's what we do too. Yeah. People, like I don't, honestly, like I don't understand. So yeah, uh, there's like two parts to creative. There's like guys that are like, um, I, I like projects. They like kind of like start and stop at max like two weeks. Anything that goes longer than two weeks, I'm like, that's film, and I'm not interested in it. Yep. Um, so there's a fine balance. But yeah, storyboards, written doc, that makes sense. Yeah, and just send it off. Client loves it. Boom, then we make the shot list. Pat mm-hmm. and I go through it. Um, obviously, we're still learning a lot. Like I learn every every time I work with Pat, right? Um, because there's things that we can do better at every single time. And if that may be, you know, like planning the shots a little bit better so it'll go smoother in the edit, it makes mm-hmm. it easier for him, then we learn that and apply that. Um, so there's, there's a million different things that, you know, you learn when you're doing yeah. it. And you, you do a lot of sick automotive content. What's like your biggest tip for shooting automotive shit? <laughs> Polarizer. Uh, <laughs> let me think. Let me think for a okay. second. Because there's, right. there are so many different things. But for automotive content, I'll just say try and make it as sick as you possibly can. And just uh, instead of just trying to put a video out, because mm. that's a mistake that, I was making like I do the content for a dealership near me, BMW. Yep. Um, and like when I first started, it was right before that I was doing videos for you know cars and whatnot. I just wanted to do it to get the video done and out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would like like back to what I said about the quality, like just dial in on that man. Like each each video, no matter if it's a ten second video, if you can make that, then put an extra. 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour to make mm. that video better than what are those? That's, okay. That's so yeah. The, what is like the, in the real, real world application of that, what is that extra? Like, okay. So you slap a video together. Looks cool. What is that extra? Like 20, 30, one hour, 60 minutes or whatever. What does that look like? Is it adding some sound design? Like, yeah. What, so yeah? for example, like most of the time, if you, if, if you are confident in your content, you'll watch it and you'll like it. That's what I was doing. I watched it, uploaded it. I, did, I, didn't, I saw maybe one, two things I didn't like. I didn't change it because I was like, you know what? It's good how it is. But now looking back at that, I wish I never did that. And I wish that those two things that I didn't like in that video, I wish I went back and took that 20, 30 extra minutes mm-hmm. to change that keyframe up a little bit, you know, make that graph smoother for the mm-hmm. speed ramp. Um, you know, there's a little like, glitch from, you know, like the framing or, you know, there's some warping, you know, take that out. Just like those little things that you don't like, if you go back and do maybe one, two revisions of it, yep. then, you know, that video is going to be better than the one that you first started off with. So just like watching it to where you're like, okay, I need to change that. Mm. But what I used to do is I watch it and be like, ah, okay, it's fine. And Pat is like, Pat helped me a lot with that because he watches his own content enough to the point where he doesn't want to watch it anymore. Yeah. 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 yeah That's he's, sick. Yeah. And he's, he's, he's always going back and be like, dude, I need to change this. Like it's pissing me off. Mm. And that's what you need to, that's what you need to be able to do is just not be lazy. And just yeah. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Do you guys run gimbals a lot? It's like a lot of stuff you do handheld. Like um, what's your like equipment kind well, of setup? Obviously for the car rollers, mm. all gimbal. Yep. Um, I did do some handheld. Yep. Um, kind of give that natural camera shake that just doesn't work too yeah. well. Um, because when you're sitting out the back of a van going 100 miles an hour in Miami, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and he's like, Ooh, it's like you're not gonna fucking work. Um, so gimbals, gimbals are great. Um, but most of our stuff that we do is handheld, man. Cool. Like, because it just gives that that look. Like, obviously with a gimbal, you can calibrate it and adjust, you know, the yeah. motors and stuff to make it super stiff and you know, it moves super quick, but like, yep. I shoot both. Like, yeah, cool. I, I have the gimbal and then, you know, our, on our recent shoot, Pat did handheld and I did the gimbal. Nice. And then, like I said about learning, um, we went back and we were like, dude, we both should have shot handheld. Yeah. Like, how the fuck yeah. Was that on a gimbal? Yeah. Hey, but it still turned out good. For so, sure. 
Yeah, we always do uh, wides with gimbal. Like we tend to do, not always, but like we tend to do wide establishers with gimbal yeah. and then tight detail shit. There's something about like handheld and like being able to rack focus and like just have like, it's like tech, it's like textile, right? Like you have like full control yeah. over it. Um, it's a totally different feeling. Uh, what's the yeah. coolest shoot, favorite shoot you've ever done? Oh, man. You've done some bangers, man. Uh, like, yeah. The recent, okay, there's probably, can I say, can I say three? Yeah, fuck yeah. Um, so the <laughs> first one that I visioned, the MPH one of the Lamborghini, that was fucking awesome. Like, yeah. just seeing that come to life, definitely, like, my favorite one. Even though it's not, like, our best video, hmm. um, it's still sick as fuck. It's dope but, as hell, bro. Um, that, I would put number one, just seeing a vision come to life and, you know, mm -hmm. the, the people I met along the way and, you know, shooting in a whole different fucking country yeah. in roads you don't know. Like, it was a whole challenge. Like, it was the biggest challenge ever to make that video. Um, and then number two, I would say, is I was just in Arizona shooting. Um, it's for a company called Riptide Tactical. Cool. Um, they Like firearm shit? It sounds like firearm shit. Mm. But it's fucking canned coffee. No way. Yeah, so it's kind of like the, the video. <laughs> it's kind of like Black Rifle Coffee, like a uh, kind yeah, of similar. Yeah, something like that. And, yeah. and they have creatine coffee, so something that's never, ever been okay. done. So cool. it's cool to shoot for them. And uh, they were just a bunch of guys from the U.S., sergeants in the, in, Past um, military the dudes. army. Yeah, like yeah. awesome dudes. Like I fucking like amazing guys. This is why I love like what I do is because of the people that I meet. Like Bro, you said, it's, it's, it's insane. Like you meet some people that you're like, that's a fucking human right there like that's a good <laughs> yeah bro 100 um, so that was that was a blast hanging out the side of four by fours ripping in the middle of the desert shooting that's rollers. dope <laughs> like the, my favorite shot that was probably the favorite shot i've ever done mm. hanging out the side of this thing off-roading and then they're in the they're in the other side by side and buddy's fucking full autoing out the side dude like, that's dope. straight up like <laughs> it was like the highest production stuff that i've worked on because we had like a whole like there's dude bringing me food and water oh, it's like they cater like yeah, uh like, and, and he, Awesome assistant guy. that's an awesome relationship with that guy Dope. um and that was my second favorite shoot that video we're still we need to get that done um, cool we need to focus on other stuff yeah um, is that like a multi one, multi format like you guys are doing a bunch like social c content uh, just, or is it just, just, web? just one video oh, okay cool um because that one they actually they texted me and it was a buddy of mine um he actually got appointed like ceo of the company while we were there oh no shit cool. oh that's dope um, so he asked me he's like hey man it's like friend of friend he's like We'll pay for everything there. Yeah. And you just come out and film. Cool. And I'm like, dude, never been to Arizona. Fuck yeah. yeah Why would yeah, I ever yeah. say no? I, I hate, I hate um giving up on opportunities. You yeah. know, like because that that risk that I took to not make money at a shoot mm. and going, you know, out of you know, Pat and I's pocket of time yeah. to make it, um, you know, it made me build a bunch of relationships. The next one they're gonna pay for it because this one's gonna be so fucking good. For sure. So it was just kind of like a, a relationship establishing yeah you know, it's like that value people. add shit yeah so yeah. It, that that I, I did it just to go enjoy that that was mm -hmm. an awesome shoot um and just meeting learning and then the outcome of the video is gonna be sick pat's gonna do some sick cgi Dope. um and oh, then the awesome. third one this one i want to drop it soon um you know fontaine blue hotel yeah of course so we did a video for them and mph which is actually fucking huge like, that's a big big that's big sick company, man. yeah that's um, sick and MPH, like Rob, marketing manager, came to me. He's like, hey, man, we need to make this video. I'm like, okay, I'll fly down. And I'm like, I, I'll, I'll go out of pocket to make this. How much I love this shit. Remember what I was talking about? Like, I'm willing to go broke. I'm willing to go yeah, broke dude. for this shit. And that's like, that. If, if anyone's listening, that's you need to be willing to do that. You need mm -hmm. you need to be. If you pass up on something where you're like, you know what? They didn't fly me out or this. Go do it because mm -hmm. you're not going to regret it. You know, yeah. you, the only time you're going to regret it is when you're laying on your deathbed. Yeah. And you're like, damn, I didn't do that. I 100% so, I agree. Um, yeah. Then yeah, that would be the third one. Is I'll sh I'll show you it afterwards. Hell yeah, yeah, I can't Same wait thing. to see it, bro. So the McLaren 720s. Okay. Yeah. We kind of weaved it in with you know the Fontainebleau lifestyle in Miami. So they have a MPH has a booth there, so they're like partnered. Okay. So you just go in the hotel and they have a booth. You rent the car straight from Fontainebleau. Oh, that's they awesome. Have, like, they have the cars ready to go. Um, so they're like, we we needed you to make an idea or like a storyboard and a video of the cars at Fontainebleau and kind of show them. Mm. that you know how we kind of make that like pens oil style well it's like it's our own style not like yeah we, i i love what they do so i kind of replicate yeah, it tweak. um yeah so they like, wanted that and they're like because who who's going to font blue probably people that have a good bit of money mm -hmm. what do they want to do rip a fucking car have fun, bro. Yeah. so we just showcased that um super sick video that was, my, that was my third favorite 
That's awesome. Yeah, I've done some good shoots and it's just a start. So That's so sick. I'm excited. Uh, are you, is your plan to do more in the States or like, obviously you're doing a lot in the States. Um, or is it focused like home base, like around GTA, like what, or is it anywhere? Well, like basically I can, I can do anything cause well, I'm legally allowed to actually do that in the States cause Dope. I have dual citizenship. Oh bro. You so, won the lottery. Yeah, Thanks, <laughs> bro, bro. That's Thanks, sick. Bro. Yeah. hundred um, percent. So I, I can go there and like, I, I can straight up tell the guys at like the border when they ask me why do you have this camera equipment? I'm like I you fucking, fucking film some videos for the company. <laughs> They're like, what? And they looked and see I'm American. They're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they wanted something Bro, exciting awesome. to do, but they can't do it to me. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, it's, it's awesome doing that. So I don't have anything like actually like established mm-hmm. in the States under like, you know. Like an LLC or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing, nothing like that yet um, because, you know, I haven't broken that 30K mark. Cool. Yet. In yeah. Florida, it's different. Yeah. Um, but I'm definitely going to target down the States because, man, there's some beautiful areas. Oh, yeah. The cops are a lot more forgiving. Like, here, if a cop saw me hanging out the back of a trunk... You're risking, like, he's, a stunt he's, driving. Yeah, you're just ruining your fucking life. Yeah, he's life. probably going to rip on me for recording out of a trunk and being unsafe. And yeah. We were actually filming that video and two cops, like, I'm hanging out the trunk. He's ripping the 720. Two cops pull up behind us out of light and I'm just looking at them in the eye. I'm like, am I going to, like, get in shit right now? So I just closed the trunk, sat down. They didn't do anything. just drove by us. <laughs> Bro, like, that's what? awesome. <laughs> if that happened here, man, like... Oh, you oh. Know, it's a roll of the dice. And I think GTA cops are, like, those are like some of the, like, hardest. Like, like my grandfather was on the Toronto Police Force forever, so I can't say too much shit. But uh, they are brutal, and uh, they're not that forgiving. Uh, this is a small town, and during, like, COVID, we used to do a bunch of rollers for, yeah. like, dealership. And it was so sick because the cops here would actually, they'd see us out filming and they'd actually just block the street off for us. They would literally what? just go fucking park, what? put some cones out. And they're like, we were like the one day we were out shooting. They're like, do you need uh like, what are you guys doing down here? We're like, oh, we're shooting some content. And we like named the dealership. And uh, they're like, oh, you want us to like close off the street for you? So it's a little bit like safer. And we're the same thing, bro. I'm hanging out a sedan fucking window. Like while yeah, we're shooting, man. we got like kind of ghetto, like, like ghetto bougie set up, like shooting Cadillac shit. And, uh, but it, it, it was awesome. So, it, but it is roll of the dice. Dude. That is, yeah. that is awesome. I actually, about the police, I'm actually about to do a video for the St. Thomas police. Oh, sick. Um, do you know where that is? Yeah, I know where St. Thomas yeah, is. So, yeah, of course. Uh, my uncle is pretty high up in command. He's mm. really good friends with the chief. Dope. Um, so he told the chief about me, saw my work. I went down, sat in their big boardroom, like TVs everywhere. Like, I think he said they put like 65 Gs into it. Like Probably, bro. Really Our tax really dollars spent real good. <laughs> <laughs> Those yeah, are your dude. TVs, yeah, bro. Dude, those are, like, oh, I like what you room. did with my money, guys. <laughs> so, uh, but no, Police Force is awesome. Uh, Windsor yeah, Police, man. I used to do uh, do quite a lot of work uh, with them for like training videos, things yeah. like that. They're a great. Like going back to those jobs that are typically like not as sexy as like the new like thing, uh, cafe or whatever, um, but they pay well and they've got great budgets and yeah. um, and you make a lot of really amazing connections. Yeah. And those are easy ones to move to retainer. Yep, um, that's, that's my plan. Because they said for 2023, they actually had no, like, budget. So they're going to, like, somehow come up with the money. Mm. Um, so they want to do a couple of videos before this year ends. And then cool. they said they're going to fully plan a marketing budget, like, per month. Oh, that's awesome, for, man. For, you know, Pat and I. I was like, shit. Cool. Like, I didn't even need to pitch. That's <laughs> awesome. Y'all did, that's sick. Y'all sold, y'all sold <laughs> yourselves, man. And I'm like, so that's going to that's gonna be really fun to do that. Um, the video we're going to make for them is going to be pretty cool. Cool. So I'm excited for that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, man. Sweet. Cool. Uh, where can uh, people find you? Give your plugs. and. Uh, um, so mostly on Instagram. That's literally where I do most of my stuff because mm-hmm. Instagram, in my opinion, is never going to die. It's always going to be top of the social media game, that and Facebook, I guess. Yeah. Um, but it's Cameron. Uh, so C-A-M-E-R-O-N. Put another N because someone took Cameron Klein. <laughs> oh, bastards. Uh, and then C-L-I-N-E. So Cameron and Klein. Amazing. We'll, we'll fucking link it. Yeah, I think my middle name is like Nylander. <laughs> Nigel or something. Yeah, Nigel. Cameron, Cameron Nigel, Nigel Klein. Klein. What is your middle name? Dyson. Dyson. It's not an cool. N. A, it does have I'm an N vacuum. in it, but yeah, yeah, nice. That's what Jake's Porsche used to sound like was a Dyson <laughs> until he straight piped it. Bro, that's what it sounded like. They're so quiet. They're so quiet. I don't like it. Dude, it was so like bad. It. He'd be rolling with all of us and like picture your neck and it's six feet, right? Yeah. Imagine you're next to it, next to the M6, decatted and straight piped. He used to stall because he's like, I can't even hear. I don't like can't hear anything. Yeah. So he's like downshift. You're like, I don't know if I rev mashed or anything. You can't hear shit. So, anyways, he straight piped it, and now it's the only car in our fleet that actually shoots flames. 
It's huge flame. Yeah, it shoots big ass, that big ass flame sick, between each other. Pow! Yeah, it's Boom. sick. It's sick, dude. I remember I was ripping in like Cambridge one time. And yeah. Like this green M4 pulled up beside Bro. me. And he just did something and it shot a flame like this big. Look back, <laughs> my window was down. Dude, my ears were ringing for like, two years. like fuck, man. I can't Bro. say like, fuck this guy because I do that shit I know, too. Right? But You're like, like, oh man, I'm that guy. I'm like, <laughs> now fuck. I know why people fucking hate me all the time. Yeah, dude. <laughs> That's amazing. That's sick. Um, well, thanks so much for coming on, dude. Is there anything else you want to chat about? or? Um, can I just say like one thing for everyone? Yeah, watching? dude, 100%. Um, you say whatever you want. If you ever feel uh off in a way or uh down about life um just get up and keep going um because i i came from like i was talking about like a, a pretty dark spot mentally um and everything's created in the mind um and i just want people that are listening to know you know you create your reality um no one else does it except for yourself and your mind and you know ultimately your actions and Go through life and don't fucking give up, man. Like, just live, man. Live. Oh yeah, that's, that's good advice, man. Yeah, man. That's, <laughs> that's all I gotta say about about life. Just live and just go through it. Go through the fucking hard times. Go through go through the good times and experience it because you never know when you're gonna die. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Hundred percent. Well, I'm stoked. I hope you do a- ASR this year with us. I hope you're on that trip, man. You have to, bro. I have to. So we're bringing in, we're bringing two guys down. Uh, Art is coming and Matt's coming. So there are co's. And uh, so Jake's Jake's got a car in, I've got a car in. And then obviously Alex. Yeah. And um, I don't know if Josh McKenzie's coming on that one. Um, he probably is. I was hoping he would. Yeah. He was on the fence. Um, but yeah, and then there's a bunch of other dudes. Chris, our buddy Christian from Kingston, he's on it. He's got that white C8. He was on last year's. Um, yeah. Yep. Vincent, Christian, Christian Vincent. Yeah. Um, I think like Rich Cooper and those guys will be out on this one too. Oh, so they're, yeah, they're exactly. every single one, bro. That's all they do, dude. They <laughs> Literally. He's out cars. like hog hunting. Just fucking. <laughs> I was actually on Rich's podcast like two years ago. I went through a, one of the worst stories of all time. Um, I had a paternity fraud. A girl said she was having my kid. Knew full well it wasn't mine. And uh, anyways, I ended up on Rich's podcast for like a two hour podcast. Uh, and it, it was a crazy one, but Rich is a good dude. He is, man. Yeah. He's funny. Yeah, he's hilarious, man. <laughs> but, uh, well, thank you so much, man. I appreciate your time. You're thank absolutely you for G. having me on, dude. I appreciate it. Like, Amazing. that was um, the best podcast I've ever been on. And Hell yeah. Beautiful space. Um, and just keep doing what you're doing, man. Don't thank you, fucking, man. Don't fucking stop. Well, I got to come up to yours. We, we'll do a switch. I gotta, yeah, I gotta man, come it'll up be in my kitchen. Fuck yeah, yeah bro. Like this, Let's go. It'll be hella raw. Dude, man. that's amazing. I love that shit. And honestly, man, you're killing it. Like, I okay. wish at 19 I was at the place that you're at. And I see, yeah. like, you're going to kill every fucking goal that you have in your life. So, appreciate you for making I, the drive down. And, uh, yeah, hell yeah. Let's fucking okay. kill it. <laughs> Overexposed. That's a wrap. <laughs> that's a wrap, Dylan. Plug that fucking logo in here somewhere. <laughs> James.